Welcome to Final Element Methods. We'll look at quick example of trusses, uh, just kind of like top level view, not going into the equations 100%, just to illustrate how this works. And Leonardo will guide us through this. Okay. Uh, should we do it? Um, so the, the, there is a summary. We two, two, two trusses or just? Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. But there's a summary quickly if you want to go through that. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, <clears throat> in this case, um, we need to identify uh, all the nodes, right? So we have the structure, we discretize this, 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 this structure um, with different um, elements, which are the trusses, and we label each of these elements um, to later for, for, for later um, assembly and for each ele and each element we have uh, as we saw for the springs um, displacements at the node i and the node j right so we need to identify those displacements and some of the elements will be connected by the displacements um, uh, at the same node all right so now we need to go <clears throat> to the local level as we did for the springs too Right, and this is the formula that is being um, already shown in the lecture to relate the displacements with the forces at the at the at, at the at the at the um, local level through the stiffness matrix uh, of of the element. One difference you can see here is that in the previous case, the spring, we have only one degree of freedom for each element. In right, so we only have displacement at i, which is going in the in the in the x one direction, and displacement at j that is going in the x one direction as well. However, for trusses, we consider <clears throat> two degrees of freedom for each node. For each node, so that's how you can see that for each node di, we have displacements in the x and in the y direction. Of course, for the node DJ, we also have displacements in both directions, vertical and horizontal, all right? Consequently, we're also solving for the internal forces for each node and um, in two directions, right? So how can we solve for the, for the um, <clears throat> sorry. So how can we solve um, for, the, for, the, for the displacements? Well, we need to go to the global level. And to go to the global level, we need to do the connectivity, right? And the connectivity is given by assigning these codes or these values um, um, to each row and each um, column, right? And by using these code numbers, we can assemble. Yes. Oh, by 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 using these code numbers, we can assemble the global stiffness matrix. Right, um, and in the global stiffness matrix, we can solve um, a, a for the displacements by uh, inverting this um, this um, this system. Again, you need to verify that is invertible, right? As we as as we did for the case of the of the spring. So we can do uh, this one really quick. This criticism of this one, how many trusses you see here? I see two, Leonardo. What, how many you see? Two trusses, yeah. And maybe we can just discretize it quick. Uh, this is pinned, completely pinned? No rollers? It's pinned. It's just pinned. Interesting. So that's easy, right? The, mm -hmm. th that's, uh, there's no, nothing going on there, right? It's displacement that would be D naught, so zero displacement in both directions. So hold on, let me make it better. Sorry, Leonardo. And here too, right? And um, for node number three, yes, it would be D naught uh -huh. and zero in both directions. This is the only one that moves. Well, <clears throat> it only moves in one direction. And only moves in one direction because we have so a that's roller. Even easier. It doesn't move up, so that's D so not this way too. It means that that one is D not too. Yes, and this vertical D one. We have only D one. Okay, interesting. 
And so which way should, what convention should we use for the, for the uh, coordinate system on this stuff? We could say that this, this truss goes this way and the truss goes this way. For beta to define yeah. beta. So, so that's a, that, that's a very important point, right? I mean, if we depends on the on the convention we use, um, we can set what is the element, what is the position for the element i, what is the position for the element j in the global stiffness matrix, right? Okay, I'm done writing everything for element one, and, and for the element two, we use is this one. Mm -hmm. which means that I know that is this one. So, I not, so we define beta relative to the X axis. So beta goes this way. Mm -hmm. And we have the geometry given, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't do it now. It's just for them to see. Let, let's do element two quick. And we define it this way. So I is on the left. And uh -huh. J is on the right. We could define it. We could define it differently just for fun. Okay. We could define it so the element goes that way to confuse, create confusion. So that's not sorry. That's not I and that's not J. That means the beta is this much, 180, right? Yes, pi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? Yeah, and then the, the node I has D0 and D0, and node I has D0, D0 here and, and D1, D1 here, right? Yep. So code number? No? So for the first element, we have 0, 1. So 0, 0, 0. Zero. No, it's okay, one, zero. One, zero. And for the element two, we have now oh, you confuse me. So um it will be one zero, right? One because zero. I, I is on the on the right. Oh. And zero zero. I did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's good to confuse people. <laughs> you are testing me. <laughs> okay. Okay. One zero zero zero. Okay. Good. Okay, and then we just use this stiffness matrix with beta. Beta is given to us for each element. Beta is 180 here. Beta, you have to use geometry. Uh, can We're you not do that here? Can you can you please come back to the previous slide? Uh huh. Are you guys clear about this the the, the nomenclature used in the in the stiffness matrix? So C accounts for the cosine and sine for the sine. Okay. So that's why Professor Coyal was mentioning beta, which is the angle the angle respect um, with the horizontal at node i. Okay, so the first position in the in the stiffness matrix K11 is K, which is coming from um, 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 e, e x squared or e yeah e, e, e x um, sorry uh, e a over l right and uh, times the cosine square of beta. You can continue now. Sorry. Good clarification, I think. So should, should we just draw? So element one is gonna have a stiffness matrix like this, four by four. Is that right? And then we just draw the connectivity here. So zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and one, Oh, that's element. element one, sorry. Yeah. And for element two, we have one zero zero zero. We get what? One zero zero zero. So one. And this beta is how much? A uh, pi. This beta is, is oh the first one is the, the, the first geometry. one. For geometry, and the second one is pi. Beta here is 180. Yeah, so pretty much done, right? Like there's only one degree of freedom in this case. Mm -hmm. Then we assemble it, right? Assembly. So let just look for the position one one. It's only a one by one, so I'm gonna just draw a little. 
So this one here, where's one one here? This one? That one? Uh, yeah, that one. Plus this one. Uh, the first one in K2. Yeah. Done. That's it. D1. And because what is the force applied? We have 1,000 kilonewtons, so one mega newton. That's easy, right? Just divide it and then. Yeah, it's scatter. It's a scatter quantity. Done, right? Yes. So we're, and how I do we find done. the forces in the in each element? What what you're saying is that to calculate the force, you have you know, you basically know, at the local element level, right? At the local element level. Yes. I, I know, like let's say element one, for example. I can multiply that by zero, zero d one zero, and this is going to be giving me forces. But it's going to give me forces like that in that coordinate system. So, but I know everything here, so I'll be able to find this 100%. And once I find these forces, I have to apply a transformation to bring it so that it's along the truss. Which is the T, the T matrix, right? So yeah, you use a T matrix. So that matrix I was mentioning um, earlier, which in terms of sines and cosines beta is a transformation matrix T. At the level, at the element level, right? Yeah. So that's a procedure, and we give the T matrix previously. Okay. Yeah. 